One of my favorite philosophers is Martin Heidegger of Germany. And the reason why I like Heidegger is because he understood philosophy as I understand philosophy and as Plato understands philosophy. And so he sees that its potential is for the formation of a people and for the formation of the ideas of a people. And so really is at the basis of all foundings of major civilizations, religions, governments, peoples. But uh, one of the works I like of his most is uh, entitled Kant and the Problem of Metaphysics. And the most uh, elemental or fundamental problem in that work for Heidegger is how Immanuel Kant, the philosopher, has in his opinion, he has a too mechanistic conception of the human mind. Kant divides the mind uh, in a way into um, the, pers the elements of the world that impinge upon our minds and then the ordering categories which he calls them that are able to actually turn those things into knowledge that has a scientific character. And uh, one, of the, one of the themes that Heidegger works on in Kant and the problem of metaphysics is how it is that Kant had been afraid to admit that the transcendental imagination is actually responsible for selecting the types of things that the types of things that are eventually considered to be knowledge or experiential knowledge um, from which descend from the categories of the mind and so really Heidegger is in revolt because Heidegger appreciates the poetic dimension of philosophizing and appreciates the creative dimension of philosophizing, he uh, brings up in that work that Kant has, uh, as he puts it, shrunk back from the very, uh, from the very ima uh, imaginative and poetic foundations that the human mind has in it or the potential for creativity that the human mind has in it in its very use of reason. So he's really fundamentally at odds with what Kant believes and because Kant was too influenced I think Heidegger believed by the Newtonian by Newtonian physics and um, over the years Newtonian physics and Spinozistic philosophy and Cartesian philosophy have had a profound impact on my thinking as well. But I'm glad that I read this work of Martin Heidegger's, one of his very best, and he is one of the very best students of the works of uh, Immanuel Kant, whoever came along. I think he took that philosopher more seriously, possibly uh, even than he did Plato, but he took the, both of those thinkers uh, to be quite uh, be quite important for the tradition of philosophy, and especially in this way by suggesting that the syntheses of the transcendental imagination cannot be captured by the categorical thinking of Kant and the way that Kant sets up the machinery of the human mind, and that is the right word for it. I think uh, the machinery of the human mind is just completely at odds with uh, Heidegger's appreciation for freedom as shown in his treatise on freedom uh, which is written on Schelling's philosophy and uh, especially in this work Kant and the Problem of Metaphysics which anyone who's interested in Kantian philosophy would find this work to be an amazing reading uh, of Kant's Critique der Rhein und Vernunft. 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 You have to get that N in there, you know, I don't always get the N. I sometimes say renewed, but it's renewed. It's just kind of, a, it's almost silent, but you have to have it in there. Uh, if you say critique, dear, Ryan and renewed, you kind of capture it. But I'm not good at German. I've never taken German, but I think I can say some of the words uh, with uh, falteringly. But this is my uh, this is my favorite work of Heidegger's, next to Being in Time, which I have read three times. And Kant and the Problem of Metaphysics, I've read about two times. It's a very difficult work, but if you're interested in uh, reading Kant scholarship, uh, it is one of the most important books written on Kant. And I believe a man named Richardson has written a book called.
called Heidegger, Kant, and Time. And it's a very, itself, a very important work. It has an introduction by William Barrett, the philosopher William Barrett. So if some people read Kant in the problem of metaphysics as I did and are confused by it, you can gain some clarity of the work from reading um, Richardson's work, Heidegger, Kant, and Time, and you can you have a very nice exposition of Kantian philosophy in that particular work that allows gives you the basics of Kant's Critique of Pure Reason. You can even you can even avoid reading the whole Critique of Pure Reason, read Richardson, then go to Kant, and you will have you will find that you can more easily understand what Kant is saying because Kant's language is old for us. It, uh, the Critique of Pure Reason was written something like close to around 1800, so it's not easy reading. It's very difficult reading. Uh, also, Frederick Beiser has a very nice volume called German Idealism, in which you will find unmatched scholarship on Kant's philosophy in that work. You might have 100 or 120 pages there, which is an exposition of Kant's philosophy, uh, among the very best that I've ever seen in its systematicity. It covers every aspect of, a, of Immanuel Kant's philosophy so that someone who is willing to take the time to read 130 of his pages can have in their possession a um, synopsis of Kant's philosophy that is in some ways uh, the best I have ever read.